warm welcome to students of literature and diploma program in creative writing in English. Once again, Renu at this end. I have with me here in the studios a very well-known face by now, <laughs> Raji Narsiman, who has been contributing a lot to IGNU's uh, academic work. She is a course writer. Uh, Raji has been is a writer. Uh, two of her very famous novels, Forever Free and Atonement, have become household names. She is a translator and many of her translations have been acclaimed. One of her uh, recent translations is Alma Kabutri, which is being published by Katha. Raji also happens to be on the editing uh, faculty of Katha. So, Raji, welcome to our studios. Thank you, Remy. Thanks a lot. And uh, students, uh, today we are going to analyze a story, rather partly deconstruct a story. The story is a Bangla short story written by Afsar Ahmed and translated by Chandana Datta. The story is called Headmaster Prawn Janachur. Uh, I am sure you have not read the story. Even though we have prescribed it for the elective course which is now being developed called Contemporary Indian Literature in English Translation which will be on offer next year. Uh, I would uh, first of all ask Raji to briefly give us a synopsis of the story. Yes, I hope I'm able to do justice to it because it really is a beautiful story. Yeah. I hope the synopsis captures some aspects of it. Yeah. Now, number one, the thing to remember is that this is about the story of Arutta who is uh, pretending to be mad. This is his tactic of survival. Mm -hmm. Arut he's not really mad, but then he, he, he's just putting on this act of madness all the time to, to cope with the harsh realities around him. The, rea the social realities have just become too bleak for him, too, uh, too painful for him to endure. So he, he, the only way he can think of uh, even to, to live with them, to exist with them, is to put on this act of madness. Yeah. This, is, this is the gist of this. <coughs> this is the framework of the story. And we will see as we go on how this madness, whether it uh, it helps him at all yeah. in his main aim of coping with reality. Mm -hmm. I think that's enough just to remember that this is the gist of the story mm -hmm. and we will flesh it out as we go on. Uh, is this practice of uh, using madness as a device for writing a story uh, an old one, uh, not a fairly recent one, Raji? Yeah, it is fairly old. It is, it is not recent. There have been a lot of precedents. Yeah. Of course, the, a very, very famous precedent is Shakespeare, yeah. where Ham, Hamlet is pretending madness. Yeah. He's not mad. The, 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 yeah, Raji, let me just uh, tell our students a little about this, because about I have Hamlet. something yes. from Hamlet okay. here. Yes, yes, now, yes. there are two very famous plays of Shakespeare. Uh, one is Hamlet and one is K King Lear. We are mm -hmm. talking about Hamlet. Now, if you see the story, what is it? Uh, what is the plot of Hamlet? Well, Hamlet wants to take revenge uh, for, uh, you know, against Claudius, who has murdered his father, slain his father, and married his mother, mm -hmm. Gertrude. Mm -hmm. So, if he remains normal, he cannot probably uh, get access to Claudius, and he cannot achieve his aim. Mm -hmm. So he resorts to this device of madness mm -hmm. as a cover uh, uh, to uh, come closer to his aim. Mm -hmm. So there is here a dialogue between Polynius who is sent by the king Claudius to find out about the reality of his madness and mm -hmm. Hamlet. Mm -hmm. I read out for our students. Polynius says, go after seeing Ham uh, Hamlet, do you know me, my lord? Mm. Hamlet replies, Excellent, well, you are a fishmonger. Mm. <laughs> uh, mm. Paulinus is shocked. Mm. Uh, not, I am not, my lord. Uh, de then Hamlet, then, then I would you were an honest man. Uh, uh, then, then somewhere he says, Sun breeds my gods in a dead dog, and so forth the mm. conversation mm. goes mm. on. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, another example is from uh, King Lear, where uh, Lear's companion, the fool, in in the in the disguise of foolishness mm. or say mm. pranks, mm. Mm. who's a court jester, mm. uh, uh, comes out with wise sayings and tells the king what has gone wrong mm. with him. Mm. Mm. Uh, though that is taken as his nonsense or mm. it's mm. his, uh, uh, you know, meaningless uh, uh, dialogue. But the king king doesn't take him seriously. Nobody takes him seriously. But look at this, when he says. Fathers that wear eggs do make their <laughs> children blind. Yeah. But fathers mm. that bear bags, mm. bags of wealth, bags of gold, yeah. shall see their children kind. Everybody laughs, but mm. look at the mm. message that he conveys to the king. And so forth. Probably you had Alice in Wonderland in mind. Yeah, Alice in Wonderland, but that is for the nonsense rhymes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Of, of, to which we will come later. Yeah. There is plenty of that in the story. Yeah. Nonsense rhymes. Yeah but which seem to be verging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then, then Ra Raji, within this overall framework of madness, mm -hmm. can you tell us how the incidents have been placed in the story? Yes. See, within this framework of madness, now first of all, we must, we must understand, uh, of course, we've dealt with the point that he is taking on madness as a shield, as a protective shield around yeah. himself to cope with reality. Yeah. Now, at one point, he lists all these social excesses which are driving him to madness. Now, we will list these social excesses. Number one, there is, a sto there is the incident of a child that has fallen into a manhole. Yes. Now, he, he, he recounts this incident when he's talking to his wife or in the course of the story. The unasked question in this incident is, why should the manhole have been left open at all? So this is the way the whole, the, all the incidents are being fleshed out within the context of the story, just to show that these social excesses, which are there all the time, are forcing him into madness. That is number one. And then below these social excesses are some unanswerable, inexplicable questions. Yes. The, questions the question here is about the manhole. There is a cause and there is an effect, apparently. The manhole is left open, so the child falls and the child dies. That is apparent. But the real question is, why should the manhole have been left open at all? Yes. He doesn't ask this question. But throughout, in all yeah. the other incidents that he rec recounts, the, the deeper implication is suggested. Mm -hmm. That these things should not have happened if these other things had not happened. Mm -hmm. And the question is, why did these other things happen? That is a larger question. Yes. You see, that, that, is how, that is the method of the um, whole story. And that is how these incidents get, uh, get fleshed out within the framework of the story. So roughly, uh, uh, quickly, we say that there is a purpose behind this method. Yes, of course. Yes. Method in madness. Yes, yes. What is this purpose? The purpose, as we said, is to is for him to help survive the the, the really uh, unlivable circumstances which survival are around him. Survival strategy in the upheaval. It's, it's a survival strategy. It's yeah. a tactic of survival. We can say, mm -hmm. and this is something that he adopts simply to be able to live on, to yeah. exist. My next question to you is, Raji, to what extent does this tactics applied by him hmm. help him? to serve his purpose? It does not serve his purpose at all. Oh. In the end, you see, it, it simply does not serve his purpose. He's a defeated man. Okay. This he is be, this is, so in other words, we can say that this is not only the story of a man pretending to be mad. Yeah. This is the story of a man who is defeated. This is the story of a defeated man whose elaborate strategy of mm -hmm putting on an act of madness simply falls flat at yeah. the end. That is what the story is about. Yeah. It will gradually lend itself to that kind of a vision. Interpretation. Interpretation. Yes. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. this man is a defeated man because his strategy of survival falls flat in the face of so many circumstances that we will come across in the story. Yes. Uh, so 
to begin with, how does this strategy not help him and get thwarted? Yes. No, Shall we say, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think, did you finish the question? No. Yeah, I did. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. So your, your question is, how did, I mean, why? Why does this strategy not work? Yeah. This is, this is your question. Yeah. It does not work because nobody takes him seriously. Neither his wife nor anybody around him nor even the policeman with whom he has a, a really very, uh, a very, a very deep encounter and which forms the pivot of the story. This encounter with the policeman is the crux of the story, structurally speaking. Yeah. But before we come to that, we will see how in so many other ways this eventual failure of his is presaged, mm -hmm. you see, is, is suggested in the earlier, uh, earlier portions of the story. Mm -hmm. Number one, in his interactions with his wife, it comes across very strongly because the wife simply refuses. She's immune to the shock effect that he's proposing to, he's, he wants to give to people by his act of madness. The wife is just not shocked. Yes. There's something, some kind of a mechanism she herself has perhaps, which is, makes her immune to this shock effect inten intended. Mm -hmm. So every time he says something, some sort of a nonsense thing like, Chanachur, um, this, this thing, uh, headmaster, headmaster prawn, Chanachur, prawn, or yeah. whatever, anything that comes into his mind, any word, the wife either keeps quiet, goes off to do something else, or she comes back and says, what did you say? <laughs> yeah. She tries to find meaning in what he said, and then she doesn't, she, of course there's no meaning, you know, to, she can't find the meaning, mm -hmm. and then she goes on, she links it up, or, or she doesn't even link it up, she just goes on to her own line of thinking, which is about everyday failures, like ad the, admi the failure of the administration, like mm -hmm. the failure of the social fabric, yeah. why there is so much corruption, these things, the, the daily topic, the daily, the, the uh, everyday politics of living, yeah. This is what she's talking about. Or then somehow, whenever he he mentions these words, these nonsense words, she just goes off to that, to that level of thinking. <laughs> so that he's just he's just there staring. Yeah. Nothing at all he can yeah. do except mumble the words to himself. Yeah. That uh, is one word about the relationship between the couple. It's a very caring, sharing, yes, loving yes, relationship yes, yes. in spite of uh, Arubda's. Uh, irrationality. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Radhi, sh sh shall we not read? Yes, I will. That's yeah. what I want to do. Yeah. You see, when he's, uh, there is one place, for instance, that um, they're having a conversation yeah. and he's, he's going on about, uh, uh, no, I'll come back to an earlier one. I'll go take an earlier one. He's, uh, the wife has been talking about, as usual, the wife has been talking about the daily political happenings, the political failures uh, on the political front. And Arupda is, of course, thinking about other things. She's talking about things, to, uh, things disappearing suddenly from the market. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. And Arupda says, yes, you're right. Where did all the Hilsas go? Ilsa is a fish. No, no, yeah. He's been thinking about the Hilsa fish all yeah. along. He's, yeah. It's just a sort of a fantasy he has. Hilsa fish in the, uh, in the kitchen and there is, suddenly you don't find them there. So there is a lot of uh, pell-mell in the kitchen. A, a sort of a pandemonium breaks out. Everybody is calling out, where are the Hilsas? Where are the Hilsas? Mm -hmm. the, that is, he's thinking of the Hilsas in that connection. Yeah. Whereas she's talking of things disappearing from the market. Corruption, some kind of <laughs> she's corruption. She's talking of things like that. And, and yeah. why? It, then suddenly he says, "Where are the hilsas? Where are the hilsas, hilsas yeah. disappeared?" And she says, "Yes, you are right. How can anybody buy hilsas, yeah. which is the most expensive fish, yeah. unless he's got rich through various other means?" Yeah. So, <laughs> so his whole purpose of shocking her yeah. is all the time going blunt. Yes. So the, the weapon always goes yeah. blunt for him. That yeah. is one incident. Yeah. Uh, also. Mm, are you never afraid? Of course I am, Headmaster Prawn Chanachur. Murders have gone up in the city, so have rapes. Yes. Headmaster Prawn Chanachur. Yes, the yes. budget se session is approaching. 
who knows what madness the ministers will indulge, indulge in this time yes yes headmaster prawn hmm. chennachu hmm. Hmm. now she is not bothered what he is saying she has to throw her concerns at him whether he responds or he does yes, not respond yes, yes. so the everything is falling flat everything and then then also the non verbal gestures that he likes to make of course no that is that is a whole uh, th- there is a very interesting thing attached to it you see his habit uh, now he's mad of course he's pretending to be mad and then one of the 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 ways in which he exp- expresses his pretended madness is to break out into a wild sort of a dance at yeah. the back of his wife all yeah. the time he's doing that yeah. at in one case when he's doing this he says it it's like the dance of it's like the dance of uh, a, a sort of a rain dance yeah. you know what a rain dance is the rain maker the the rain maker makes these wild gestures yeah. invokes the clouds he invokes the rain gods yeah. he does all kinds of wild capers yes to coax rainfall and torrent yeah, yeah. torrential so, rain so, to so fall so that is the success yeah. of the rain dance yeah. now this man arupda is doing some sort of a rain dance yeah. and he's wishing that his dance would succeed in making the rains come yeah. let the torrents come yeah. now all the time so so, so the, what we have to think here, what we have to remember here is that in his madness this yeah. tactic that he's adopted yeah. he's waiting for this madness to explode into something really terrible yeah. into something terrific so yeah. that it endorses him it gives him uh, yeah. a, a surer footing Yes. You see, in his own madness, in his own tactic, it makes yeah. him sure. It gives him confidence. Yeah. You see, also somewhere, Raji, this uh, kind of uh, frenzy, frenzy, full dance, also shows his helplessness, kicking his uh, limbs. Yes, he. D- uh, yes. And for something to happen, which uh, doesn't seem to happen. No, I know. Yeah. He, he's doing that, but he's also aware of it. Yeah. He's aware of it. Yeah. And let me remind our students, Raji, of uh, uh, Ibsen's play *A Doll's House*, because they must have those All who right. have done okay. their uh, yes. BDP mm. from mm. Igno mm. have have read mm. the play mm. *A Doll's mm. House*. Mm. And there again, Nora, the heroine, uh, dances in this kind of mm. fit mm. of frenzy oh. mm. with the husband, mm. because she knows that mm. very soon the husband will. Det- her lie and then a relationship will go flat mm. for mm. all times to mm. come mm. so sh- sh- the grim reality she wants to escape she wants to desperately get something done just mm. as this man is praying for rain yes. maybe it's mm. a rain dance so mm. there it's a dance for some kind of redemption which never comes her mm. way mm. so this non verbal kind of uh, language i would say is very important to very, understand very important, uh, the very significance so. and while we are at it renu this non verbalism we can develop it a little further we can we can yes. come up with some more points which are which are there yes. in the in the story yeah now non verbalism at 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 a, at a certain level of course it means gestures but it also means an interior monologue yes N- non verb he's not saying anything yeah. but he's thinking along all the time uh, yeah. just saying these words to himself and at one point you see he has played uh, this is just a little bit of the background to the to this incident which i will give so that it becomes a little more easier for the students to understand yeah. the background is that he's t- given an a wrong address to one of his friends the f- and telling him uh, the address a- in which a certain suicide has taken place so he gives his friend who's come looking for him Uh, this uh, this particular wrong uh, this address in which the suicide has taken place the friend goes there and uh, th- uh, he's told by the the boy's parents mm. that he is dead now the friend naturally takes it uh, understands that arupda is dead yeah you see uh, is it clear i hope it's clear yeah staging death st- uh, he's staging his own death yes now arup uh, ananya that is the friend's name is ananya Mm. now after ananya has been told that arupda is dead mm. it's it's all you know it's all a sort of a mistake yes uh, but uh, ananya comes out of the house f- feeling shattered and shaken and everything and he goes walks past arupda's house and he sees arupda there largest life yes now he says arupda what are you doing here i thought i thought yes. he can't go on he really can't say it yes 
So at that time, the thoughts in his mind are very significant. Yes. You see, just to just to illustrate this non-verbalism. Yeah. Now he's saying, for instance, mm. and then uh, he conveyed his. Uh, now he became terribly afraid, but he could never. Arupda could never comprehend my desperation to remain alive. Mm. I had wanted to tell him yeah. that the ants are more imaginative than the fire. <laughs> Hmm? Yes. This would have helped him understand the fact of my existence. Yes. Now he's not saying the, all this at all. Mm. The sentence here: I had wanted to tell him that the ants are more imaginative than the fi fire. I wonder if it is clear. Can you understand it, Ren? Little bit, yes. Yeah, a little bit. That uh, it's, they, it's they, they have better survival tactics. Yes. Yes. How? How? Uh, uh, how unconquerable, faster. in a way, how yeah. unconquerable, induct indestructible yeah. the like ants are. As compared to fire, fire which is extinguishable. Fire, which rages and rages and rages and burns itself down, yeah. finishes, it turns into ash. Yeah. Whereas with the ants, you may kill, you may kill, you may squash a thousand ants. And they but there will be um, ten thousand, a million still there. Yes. And they will just come up. Because you, they you multiply cannot. in no time. <laughs> you never know how they multiply. Yeah. They are there. They are part of life. Yeah. So he yeah. says, he says, he's like these ants. Yeah. The desire, uh, the ants desire to live on, desperation to live on, can never be killed. Mm -hmm. He's like that. Yeah. Hmm? He yeah. says, so that is why, even if he was killed, he will never be killed. He will yes. be alive. Yes. Now, this is kind of thought which how are you ever going to convey it to anyone? Yes. He so can only think it. Yes. Who is ever going to fathom? He, he wishes that Ananya would fad fathom his thought. Yeah. He cannot. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can. Yeah. So Arupda is, is this is an, an instance of non-verbalism yes. in the story. Yes. Uh, also, uh, Raji, shall we recount that very interesting incident in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Uh, where he cites an example what is happening in the present uh, as the story unfolds what he does when his daughter and his wife arrive from school uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, that is again a way of his non-verbal kind of yes uh, that, that is non-verbalism yeah course. Yes, yes because uh, uh, the, the his wife pramita and daughter tini they come from school and his wife rings the bell and he <laughs> pretends that he is busy doing something whereas he had seen them coming from school uh, through the balcony hmm, hmm. and yet he, wo he, he pretends uh, and, and then after a while he comes down he doesn't tell them okay come in the door is open uh, he pretends that the door is latched and then he makes a sound hmm, hmm. Uh, as if he's opening hmm, the door hmm, 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 and hmm. then Mm, while the, they they enter, then again he pretends that he he makes a sound with the latch as if he's again Knocking. bolting mm -hmm. the door, mm -hmm. but he does nothing of that sort. Yes, so yes. that makes uh, Pramita suddenly uh, taken. She's taken by surprise that oh the door was never bolted by him and he was pretending. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these are his non-verbal gestures. Uh, he resorts to and he says in the beginning Raji I think mm, yeah. this is a very very important statement which uh, right. Arupta makes in the very beginning, beginning. of the story yes, 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 uh, yes, I'd yes. like to read it mm. uh, I'm forced to weave together meaningless activity and thought mm. and have reached a point where there is no other way out mm. I must live with them mm -hmm. without solutions my body, its numerous parts, strike different meaningless poses constantly. Mm -hmm. I lose myself in never-ending meaninglessness, seeking refuge in it. And yet my neighbors, my colleagues, my wife, my daughter, none of them has found my behavior or my gestures strange or unreal. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they have found an element of truth in all these. I think this opening statement yeah, it, it is says very everything. everything. Everything, yes. And everything is connected to this opening statement. Yeah, n n not only that, we find that this opening sen these opening sentences are the voice and speech of a very sane man. Sane man. He's not in. Uh, there, it, it proves clinchingly that uh, how effective, mm. how uh, deceptive. The madness yeah. is. I mean, it's, it's just an illusion yeah. that he he's creating, and he's not mad. 
He's I mean, that that tells you in in a, in no uncertain because terms. Because this uh, this uh, uh, statement uh, cannot be made by a madman. No, man. not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Yes. And uh, any other incident, Raji, where this pretended madness uh, is exposed? Yes. Or, or he he act, uh, he acts in a way which is funny. For instance, this telephone in, installing the telephone in <laughs> the house yes. of the dead uh, of boy. The dead boy. Now he he can't explain it himself. Now there there is something very much deeper there. Yes. You know, in this po in this thing about his uh, giving the wrong address to people to go in, in to go and install the telephone, telephone in somebody else's place. Yeah. See, in, from that incident, from that episode, mm. uh, comes the other episode of the friend of, of his friend Ananya, Nanya, who, yeah. he, who he go goes, whom he asks to go to that house. He he tells Ananya that that house is his house. Yeah. You remember? You remember that point? And then he comes to know that um, the boy uh, Ananya comes to know that the boy is dead, and he's throughout thinks that the boy being referred to is Arupda. Yeah. Now your question is uh, where these uh, um, the madness, the the tactic of madness falls yeah, flat. Yeah, these kinds mm. of irrational looking yes. uh, events in the story. Uh, this is another example. And what uh, satisfaction does it derive when the bell, the telephone yes. bell, mm. coos like mm. a bird? Mm. Mm. Yeah, there. Th that is there. That is there. Yeah, yes, so yes. It, uh, it gives him some vicarious. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can call it vicarious, yeah. but it is part of this whole uh, strategy of madness that is adopted. Yeah. You see, you see. I think, I think he wants to see. He wants to take it to the very extreme, to the extreme limit possible. Yeah. One extreme limit is to stage his death. Yes, that is one extreme limit, isn't it? Yeah. Although he says later on that he is very desperate to live, he will never die. Yeah. But he would like, still like to to stage, to visualize his death yes. without dying. Yes. He wants to visualize his death. Yes. Hmm? Yeah. So, uh, Raji, do you think that uh, shall we tell our students that this is an example of a character who is not a split personality but who is a consciously Split personality. Yes, that that <laughs> is the whole point of the story. That yeah. he is not really mad, but it's a, it's a desperate recourse to madness. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is really a, a really frightened man's recourse to madness. He's yeah. frightened all the time, yeah. and he's also trying to conquer his fright. Yeah. And maybe we can give some examples of the methods by which he wants to conquer his fright, yeah. uh, his fright. Yeah, that is now. What are the things that a man like Arupta would be uh, most frightened of? Yeah. A, a man like Arupta with his set of mind in which administrative failures and all these things are preying hard on his mind. Yes. So what would he be very much frightened of? He'd be frightened of the police. Yes. The police is a, a big, a very strong part of the establishment. And mm -hmm. Arupta is an anti-establishment man. Yeah. Don't forget, uh, that is the main thing about him. So he's going to be very defiant yeah. with the police. Yeah, I, I think uh, Raji in this story the police comes as a very sinister, very sinister uh, uh, entity and in our society. And, the whole and you see it is recurring. This policeman coming is a recurring rec motif in no, the story. No, that is one thing that I have not been quite able to understand. You see, why does he befriend the policeman? In the first case, you see, when the policeman first comes and says that suicides have taken, uh, a suicide has taken place here, what Arupda decides at that point is to, beca to, to go on with the policeman. Yeah. He says he acts afraid. He stammers yeah. to rouse the suspicions of the police, yeah. whereas it is clear that they come to the wrong address. Yes. The wife has already made it clear to the policeman that they made a mistake. Yes. Now, but even then the police persist. Now, frankly, a little, I am not quite able to understand this, but the, the, the story goes on from there that Adupta is befriending the policeman. Yes. What is the point there? The point there, Renu, I think, is this, that if you can't beat your enemy, you befriend him. That is an old Chanakya law. Very, you very remember? well said. Huh? Huh? You, that is an old Chanakya niti, uh, uh, I mean Machiavellian tactic, mm. that if you can't make them, break them. Yes. Hmm? 
and bec- and sabotage yeah. by becoming an insider you sabotage their plans but raji if he is befriending the police then One his second. cause hmm? is getting defeated no this no way. no the befriending is only the first step yeah and then you see he expresses his wild his savage uh, uh, contempt hmm. almost anger with the police yeah, but Maybe what causes th- that anger is also important that what is it that the policeman uh, t- talks that enrages him yeah the police will 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 just uh, Why shall, I, to shall read I read out yeah. yes maybe i can read that out yeah that will be let me see quick See now the policeman has moved into the room now he's Arutha calls him in he say <laughs> that is his tactic of befriending the police yes. he says come in come in have a look please have a look and the policeman says the walls of your room are so nice such a beautiful color the walls of your room have and and he say he Arutha says he he tries to tell the policeman this is not the real color of the walls hmm? and the policeman at that point gets angry he says how dare you talk talk that talk like that to policeman do you know what we can do to you do you know who i am he begins to threaten him now that that is not the point <laughs> the point really is the cast uh, the, the first hint of threat that the police gives him yeah he says he suddenly the policeman says yeah. it is very beautiful yes what So Arutha says, "What? What is beautiful?" Yes. He's told him that the ru- the color of the walls is not what he thinks. So there, the yeah. policeman has no illusions. Then again, he says, "Very beautiful." So then he says, "Your wife and child." Your, your wife, wife and, and child. Daughter. daughter. Your wife That's and daughter. That's where the threat comes. Set. So this is the great thing. The policeman. Now the policeman can do anything. Yes. See, this is the, the this is the real lesson, or th- this is the. Uh, moral perhaps in the story the, the king is on on the situation yes, that the police the can harass you yeah. it is not being said at all the police can perhaps want him uh, want him to give him a give them a bribe give them a hefty bribe if they if they are going to let the wife and the daughter go yes if they if they are going to let their wife and the daughter go unharmed they will want a price all these things are implicit implicit in the story yes see nothing is said but these threats are all there the moment the policeman says your wife and daughter you know arup dies finished practically yes. finished yes. at that point so that is where his real fears begin to start and the mask sort of falls off and he starts talking a little bit in a normal manner mm-hmm. the dialogue form starts in the story yeah, and yeah. things like uh, have a cigarette and uh, yeah, there is uh, shit on your head <laughs> and uh, sh- sh- uh, shall we read that out yeah, please read that is very very, very, humorous, that uh, is very, impo- very nice and very important yes now the police uh, the policeman is uh, he uh, arupta has befriended the policeman to the extent yeah. that the policeman is beginning to be amused by arupta yeah. he says really this is very beautiful your meaningless words are beginning to intoxicate me yeah. and now arupta gets his chance yes. see what we were saying that when you if you befriend the enemy you can also harm him yes see, that, <laughs> now this is he going to harm him in his own way he can't do anything big but he can at least have his verbal flings at him yes now he says Why don't you take off your cap and scratch your bald head once? <laughs> It will make you feel even better. He's daring to call the policeman your bald head. Bald head. Atma Ganga says that kind of thing. Yeah. The officer takes off his cap, scratches his head, and sighs in pleasure. Brilliant. Yeah. Then, police. The uh, Arupta says there is vulture shit on your head. Hmm. The, what is the policeman? He says every now and then I have to go to the morgue. I have pet vultures close to the morgue. it must be their shit he bursts into laughter yes. the fact is not all corpses in the mob can be disposed of properly we also do not always hand over the corpses to the next of kin now he's saying all this and what does arupta say how do you live with dried shit on your head <laughs> <laughs> yes so the policeman <coughs> now here becomes really human and says oh my dear sir we too are types of vulture 
I think this is a very honest statement. This is a very, statement. very beautiful sentence. Yes. But everything is, everybody is gone off the mask. Yeah. You know, whatever mask they are wearing yes. is off. Yes. This, this one minute. Yes. This one minute. Yes. Then, Arupta says, when he says, Oh my dear sir, we too are types of vulture. Arupta says, Are we? The policeman says, Are you scared? Yeah. Arupta says, Why don't you take a cigarette? It makes you a little human. <laughs> That they are not human. <laughs> you take a cigarette, you become human. So Arunda is talking now yes, very sensibly. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's bandying and words with him. And we're befriending him. Yeah. And yeah. he's bandying words with him. You know, like with any friend. Yeah. You, um, why don't you do this yard instead of... I mean, he's not using the word yard. Yeah. But yeah. this is like, you know, between very deep friends when you can yeah. banter along. Yes. Banter words, bandy words, anything you can see. You become cheeky. Yes. You know. So the police officer lights a cigarette, inhales deeply and blows out some smoke. Mm -hmm. Then he says, you have three ashtrays, don't you? One in this room, one in the bedroom and one in the bathroom. <laughs> now probing yeah. again no. his privacy. <laughs> <laughs> so he yeah. has to reply in so the same now, manner. Now his defenses are up again. Yes. Once this policeman says this, so what is his defense? He just says, headmaster. Prawn chana <laughs> Yes. Now the policeman says, but you're more dangerous at home. Yes. Can you guess why? Now again, this is a threatening, you know, this is, there's a threat in all this, yes. when the policeman is talking like this. So Arubda again lapses into madness. He says, oh my poor birds, don't go into the water, float away like the clouds. <laughs> yes. Now this is a line, this is a very important line, it occurs in one of the earlier poems, if we have the time. We'll yes, talk we'll about just talk point. about hmm? two things hmm? more. One is the poetic utterances, poetry in this story. Mm, yeah, just let, me just finish, let me just finish this, yeah. Renu. Uh, look here, I'm beginning to fall in love with your kind of talk, but I have to go uh, take charges of the cops soon. Something of that nature is about to happen. What is stopping from, what is stopping you from fishing the child out of the manhole? See, this is the time in which he slips in this very important question. Which is uh, at the back of his yes, mind, yes. concern. So when he has softened up the policeman yeah. by all this talk. By befriending you see, him. You see, the, this policy of befriending your enemy is bearing fruit now. Yes. A little bit. Yeah. So he says, what is stopping you from fishing the child from the manhole? Yeah. And the policeman says, oh, there is a problem in it. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you everything about it. Mm. Suffice to say, my dear friend, it is a conspiracy against the police. So long, I'm leaving now, I will come again. That is sinister. Yes. He's going to come again. Yeah. So, Arupda descends into yeah. madness again. Yeah. Raji, we have just enough no, time, no time to talk about two things. One hmm. is uh, uh, the Arupda's love of nature. What yes. do you think about it? I think it has touched me a lot. It uh, has... His, Again, an escape uh, yes. in nature. Of course, it, yeah. is, it, it is an escape I into, into nature, nature of a sane man. Yes. You see, he's not being mad at that time. Uh, and I would it like to recall that glow he experiences and sees of the Krishna, hmm. uh, Krishna Churna, Churna hmm. tree, hmm. Hmm. and which reflects uh, his walls also. And uh, he keeps looking at it as if he's here is an idealized world, a yes. screen. Yeah, it's a screen. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the red glow of the tree yeah. is like a screen for him, uh -huh. behind which he yeah. can take shelter. Yeah. yeah. Also, the, the torrential, the dance, where he rain dance, yes. where he talks about rain, torrents, mm. uh, sea, mm. earth. These are life-giving, life-supporting. Uh, yes, elements yes, in yes, nature. Yes, yes, yes. Th everything, every word that he says. And in then fact, connecting these with birds with and nature, animals. With nature. Total. Uh, those uh, two points, just one or two lines, I think yeah. we could read out. Yeah. From before, and then we'll have to round it off. Yeah, fishes, so, hills, we the, uh, we, we By the time you come to the lines. Uh, rounding off. Yeah. Uh, we'll just have to, we have to round it off because the rounding off is very important. Yeah. I'll just read out one. But one uh, line from this poem where it says, Birds fly, their feet pointing downward, their spines ramrod. Now that is a very, very vivid picture of birds in flight. Just think, when the bird is flying, what do you see? You see it, its feet are pointing downward. Yes. And its spine is absolutely straight, ramrod. Yeah. So that is a very vivid picture of the bird. And also when you read the rest of the poem, the rest of these nonsense words say. But the phrases and images are very sense important. Sense of terror. Yes. The sense of terror yeah. that comes up. Yeah. See, oh my poor birds, don't go into the water. 
Yeah. He's talking of crocodiles with their yawning yeah. mouths. Yeah. Now there, there is terror there. Yeah. And in the other poem, this very, very important line is the fire. The ants are more imaginative. Mm. Yeah. So if you just keep these two lines in mind, yeah. you will see that in even in his most, uh, even in the moments in which in, in which he's showing terror, he's expressing terror. The terror is linked to nature. Yes, that is very important. Yeah, Imag is very important. Uh, uh, imagery is very sensuous. Very important. That shows the man. Yes, the the, it does. Uh, the poetic man, the mm. um, a man of nature. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. Uh, so, so round it round 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 just in a few words. It's a tragic story. No, just to show, yeah, it's yeah. not only a tragic story, it's the story of a defeated man. Yes. Now, at the end, when it is almost clear, when it's more or less established that the policemen are going to keep on coming, they'll come and go, come and go. This is going to be a recurring thing. So he's frightened, he's finished. Uh, he He's with his wife at that time. I open the door, I'll just I'll read it out. I open the door and step out. Where are you going? Ramita thrusts her face out of the door. In the shade of the sun in the netherworld. Why are you going? Because I am not able to do anything. When will you return? I will be back soon. I will be back because I will not be able to do anything. And then I'll go again. What are you thinking of? Some meaningless things like... And then he lapses into silence. That is the point when he does not say the words. Even the saying of the words has become yeah. useless. So yeah. he doesn't even say those words. And... He is in a state of a, uh, a very roused state, yes. and he see he goes down. He comes out of the room. He goes down the the steps from his room, and he thinks that there is a flight of stairs, a flight of steps, just facing him. Mm -hmm. So he climbs that flight, and when he comes to the top, he goes back to the room which yeah. he has just left. Yeah. So it just shows that he's trapped there for life. Yes. He's going to leave and come back. Yeah. He's going to leave and come back. He says again, why are you going? Because I'm not able to do anything. When will you return? I will be back soon because I will not be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. Now this coming and going, trapped for life, this is also perhaps symbolic of the police yeah. which, is, which is going to come yeah. and go. The policeman is going to come and go. Yeah. He's also going to recur. His visits are going to be recurring. Yeah. This is the story of, uh, I mean, the a story of a life without any any kind of solution yes, to it. Yes, Raji, uh, I'll have to now wind up. <laughs> and uh, I think we have beautifully uh, tried to analyze the story, uh, uh, you know, talking about its various aspects of madness and finally, uh, very unfortunately, it's a tragedy as life has turned out to be the grim realities of life uh, strike uh, a sensitive and a, um, you know, rational person like Anu Arupta. We have also seen the three-dimensional effect of language, how words used in yes, particular yes, contexts yes. convey meaning uh, so very sensibly, which something which looks uh, apparently irrational, illogical, is not so. No, so, no. Uh, I think I have enjoyed talking to mm -hmm. you, Raji, and but I think it's a very complex story, and I want to say that a short story uh, has all the possibility of, of course, exploring, yes, it's immense, it's uh, immense and there are no constraints no, of no, plot, not at all, not at all. But uh, one point we must get across to the students is that it is a tragic story. It's a, that we said, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So thanks for uh, joining <laughs> us in this discussion, mm. and uh, ho hope you will read the story now with a lot of interest and maybe you will have m many more interpretations I hope uh, so I really to, hope to, so to give us yes yes so goodbye uh, I mean, this is endless yeah <laughs> bye bye